Welcome to another edition of the Dynamic Sean's View Entertainment on YouTube.com. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, where it is always prolific, consistent, and dedicated with your WWE Battleground 2014 WWE Network slash pay-per-view review. It kicked off in an extraordinary match, a epic match, a match that set the tone very solid. It went three falls, and thank God it did because I could not get enough of this. I could have went to see this five or ten rounds. It was the Usos defending their WWE Tag Team Championships against Luke Hopper and Eric Rowan of the Wyatt Family. Now, this thing started off wild. It was off the charts. It was chaotic. There were near falls. Uh, it was it was a seesaw back and forth match. You didn't know who was going to win at what time. You didn't know what superstar was going to pull a move out of their arsenal. It went all three rounds, but the Usos end up getting the last two wins. Of course, with Luke Hopper and Eric Rowan getting the first fall. But what a match this was. What a roller coaster ride this was. And I don't do this often, but five out of five stars to kick off Battleground. Exceptionally great match. I cannot tell you how happy I am about what the what the Wyatt family and Usos, they put it all on the line tonight. They showed you exactly what they're made of. And this match actually ended up making the WWE Tag Team Championships look important, made them stand out. They made them look golden. And I think the WWE Tag Team Championships uh, definitely have legs to stand on now. And the legitimacy of those championships are looking better and better every single time the Usos and, and, and the Wyatt family get in the ring. So great match, great match to kick off Battleground. And you know what? If this was the only match at Battleground, I think this would get a... I think this would be a, a fair grade, no doubt about it. But we're going to continue the night. It can only get better from here, or so we hope. Now at Battleground, it was scheduled to be Dean Ambrose going one-on-one -on -one with Seth Rollins. We all know how much Dean Ambrose has been wanting to collide with Seth Rollins after what Seth Rollins did by stabbing Ambrose in the back all the weeks of torment, all the torture, everything that's went on. But since Dean Ambrose got a measure of revenge before the match started backstage, he attacked uh, Dean Ambrose would attack Seth Rollins. Triple H would send Ambrose out of the arena. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be mad, and they're not going to be happy that this match didn't didn't take place tonight because Ambrose got thrown out of the arena, but it furthers the storyline. It furthers the angle between these two, and it builds up even more attention. So I, I can see where the WWE is coming from. They're saving this for SummerSlam or another important date. So, you know what? It's gonna, We know it's going to be a great match. We know that Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose are going to do it. great things, but tonight just wasn't their night in. Like I said, it continues the storyline. So you got to look at it from other standpoints, just not, all oh, the match got canceled. All oh, this whole pay-per-view sucked. Up next, the Divas Championship was on the line. AJ Lee versus Paige. Now, Paige went into this definitely wanting that Divas Championship, thinking that she could once again become the proud Divas Champion. But every time that Paige thought she was going to throw something at AJ, AJ would always have an answer for everything. There was counters. There was kickouts. There was... um. There was, like I said, there was counters, there was kickouts, and then in the end, it would be AJ Lee that would come away with the victory. And a match that was decent, it was a little sloppy at times. I thought we could get a little bit better out of these two, but I think you know what? In the in the future, it will get a little bit better. But I I don't know how much more uh, legs this this feud has to stand on. But AJ Lee, your reigning defending Divas champion, in a match that I would say was three out of five stars, only because AJ got the win. But like I said, Paige definitely went in here with a game plan, and I thought actually. At first, Paige had AJ figured out. AJ couldn't figure out a plan, but lo and behold, AJ was able to get around that, get out of the blocks, and retain her championship. And like I said, a decent match. Could have been better, though. And up next in a battle of the countries, it was Jack Swagger going one-on-one -on -one with Rusev. Now, Jack Swagger came in this with a plan, and he had a hell of a gut check through this match because he had Rusev on the ropes. There was many of times that Jack Swagger gained so much momentum that it looked like he was going to set off Rusev. And I'll tell you what, Swagger gained most of control of this match. There was some offense on Rusev, but Jack Swagger was able to calm the storm until they got to the outside of the ring where Swagger was relentless with the ankle lock. Okay, the Patriot lock, as he likes to call it. But until Swagger was able to get that ankle lock on the outside of the ring, and then Rusev would use his momentum against Swagger, and Swagger would be sent into the ring post, knocking him out. Rusev answers the 10 count. Rusev answers the count, wins the match. Swagger not able, unable to make it into the ring, and then to add insult to injury, locks Swagger in the, um, in his submission move that no one has been able to get out of, the camel clutch. Uh, so this was good. I mean, you, you can see the storyline. You can see where the WWE is building it. You know, obviously, the, you know, this this isn't going to end on a count out. There's going to be more legs for this to stand on. As you can see, the theme of tonight is there is more legs for things to stand on here at Battleground. And it's been a pretty good exceptional Battleground up to this point, no doubt about it. I'd give this match, I'd give it about 3.5 out of 5 stars just because of the pure dynamics that we got in this match. And Jack Swag was made to look strong while not offsetting Rusev's streak. 
And up next at WWE Battleground, Seth Rollins would aggr would come out. Hold on, let me, let me get this straight. Come out and tell the referee, the announcer, to raise his hand in victory that Dean Ambrose, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, that's why I'm a little lost for words. Dean Ambrose has forfeited, even though Dean Ambrose was thrown out of the building. And that's exactly what the referee and the ring announcer did. They raised his hand as the winner and announced Seth Rollins the winner. And Seth Rollins raised his hand, and when the match was done, when there was no actual match, you might think the guy won a world championship. He was celebrating. He was actually happy with the way that that went down. He knows what went down. But, oh, no, Dean Ambrose would not be denied. Dean Ambrose would not be slammed down because he would come out and he would attack. It would be a war. It would be something of epic proportions. Dean Ambrose would attack, and he would take down Seth Rollins, and he would take him down to a fight because there was officials, there was referees, everyone trying to break this up. Seth Rollins' life is going to be a living hell. Seth Rollins doesn't realize what he's got himself into with Dean Ambrose. This was an absolute war. I mean, the amount of officials and referees it took to separate these two men, indescribable, insurmountable. This was something out of a damn war. It really was. I call it a war, and I'll say it a million times because it's going to be that. When these two men get in the ring, it is going to be a war. And Battleground couldn't even contain Ambrose and Rollins. This is far, far from over. Mark my words. And I'm glad it's not. I'm glad it's not over. I'm glad it's far, far from over, ladies and gentlemen. And up next, in what was a very aggressive and physical encounter, Bray Wyatt would encounter Chris Jericho. Now, this match I felt was strong. I felt it was good effort put by both competitors. But in the end, in a surprise out of nowhere, Chris Jericho was able to overcome and adapt with a code breaker on Bray Wyatt. But Bray Wyatt definitely got in the head and the mind of Chris Jericho in this match with his antics and his diabolical ways. This was a good match. I found myself interested in it from the start to finish. I was thoroughly surprised, though, that Chris Jericho got the victory. Now, is everyone going to argue and complain that Chris Jericho didn't put over Bray Wyatt? John Cena didn't put over Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's going to be regulated to curtain jerker. He's going to be on the main event. He's going to be on WWE Superstars. He's going to get rejected. He's going to get released. Would you give me a damn break? Follow the story. You'll see where it goes. Jericho knows best. I give that match 3.5 out of 5 stars. Although, with the surprise of a Jericho win, I could bump it up to a 4. And up next at Battleground was an entertaining, compelling, competitive battle royal that saw all kinds of momentum shifts and turns. You didn't know what was going to happen, what was going to come away, but The Miz would sneak. The Miz would actually steal a victory. It was a pretty entertaining, like I said, battle royal. It was all right. You know what? Not one of the best, but obviously not one of the worst. The Miz, your intercontinental champion. I give it about 3.5 out of 5 stars. Miz, Nooner, Kano champion. Let's see how he holds that championship with prestige, honor, and respect. Respect. And up next, the WWE Championship would be on the line. Fatal four-way. John Cena had the odds stacked against him. Didn't even have to be involved in the decision. But John Cena somehow over overcame the insurmountable odds. The stacked deck and all the things that came his way and all the ramifications and what was one hell of an eventful, monumental match. John Cena comes away still champion, but there were times when he thought Kane was going to win. Quite frankly, Orton and very well Roman Reigns, but John Cena was able to stand the test of time, and John Cena is still the reigning defending WWE World Heavyweight Champion And what was one hell of a match. A match that was perhaps one of the finest fatal fallways I have seen in recent memory. There is no doubt about that, but the great Battleground, to give it a grade all together, I'd have to give Battleground a solid 7 out of 10 stars, and felt that it did everything it was the intentions of the the storylines, the build, the foundation, the fundamentals. I think Battleground came through tonight. Maybe even 7.5 out of 10 stars. It was a very successful WWE pay-per-view by the WWE Network. Your comments, your opinions. This has been your Battleground highlights, review, and everything else in between. Subscribe.